Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott. Today, I'm going to give you three ways to master time management. You know, and I, and I hear some debate about whether, you know, you can't manage time. We all get the same. I think you know what I mean. I kind of agree with that sentiment, uh, but we still call it time management. So we all have the same 24 hours in a day. We all get to make the best use of them as we can. So again, some gurus will say, well, you can't manage time. It's just going to go anyway. But you get my point. You have to manage your time wisely in order to meet any of your goals, whether the big goals, whether the small goals, it doesn't matter. Managing your time and getting the most done per segment of time, per day, per week, per month is what's going to excel you over others. Not that you're competing against others, but it's going to help you get an advantage and help to grow your business, grow your life, get you more fit. You know, to have more time in your day, you've met as many people as I have. They're like, I just don't have time. Uh, because they're not managing their priorities. They're not managing their time. They're not making good decisions with, with what they're able to do. So if you follow these three simple steps, you're going to be a lot less stressed. You're not going to be that person that's like, oh, I just don't have enough time. You'll be more consistent in your productivity and your production. And most importantly, you're going to increase and exceed what other people can produce. Uh, and you're going to increase that exponentially if you follow these three tips. Uh, achieving any goal is going to require both time and consistency and learning how to master the clock, how to own the clock, how to use time to your advantage will give you both of those things. So the first step we're going to talk about is recognizing how you actually spend your time. And this is something that a lot of people overlook. Uh, they just don't think about. What I'm going to ask you to do is every two hours for an entire week, keep a journal of what you do during the day. So every two hours from the time you wake up out of bed, to the time you close your, close your eyes, set a little alarm. Like I said, I'm always working with timers around here. Set a little alarm that, and then you go back and remember what you did during those two hours and list everything out. Write down what you did during each two hour period. And it shouldn't take long, five minutes at the most. Uh, so if you're awake 16 hours times eight, it's like 40 minutes during the course of a day, all through a single week. You need to figure out where you're wasting your time, where your gaps are, when your productivity is taking the biggest hit so I want you to write down everything. And you, you can think you could skip this step or you could uh, you know, be cavalier about it, but I'm gonna tell you to take it seriously. Just write down everything that you've done in that two hour period very specifically. You know, and you might not remember that you went and took a bathroom break at 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that, uh, but be specific about the things that, that distract you especially. Uh, you know, did you stop to make a phone call um, that was personal in nature when you, when you should have been working or wanted to be working or planned to be working? Was that a distraction for you? Uh, did you check your email 15 times? Uh, which you probably did, because most people do. Uh, did you check social media when you should have been on there? List them out with times next to them. Uh, and again, it's more eye-opening than anything else. It's just an awareness thing, but you'll be amazed at how many times you check your email or how many times you check your, your social media. So keep a journal of those things, again, every two hours for a week's period of time just to be aware of it. Take a look at those things. Next, and second step you want to do is to make sure that you maximize your morning and your evening. Uh, again, I'm always talking about morning routines and I'm always saying a good morning routine starts with a good evening routine. So the most important parts of your day are when you're powering up and when you're powering down. Nailing these, like absolutely getting the most productivity out of these two times of the day can make you more productive throughout the next day into the next and just kind of get you into those good habits, those good routines. So it's all about maintaining your your personal momentum, not getting into a place where you, you get frustrated or you get depressed or you get distracted, don't get your stuff done, then feel like you're behind uh, and you lose some momentum. Keeping that momentum up, especially when you're in project mode or what I call a launch. So again, I don't feel like people can grow steadily. I feel like you grow. So during that launch phase when you should be focused is when you want to keep that personal momentum up. So solidify your sunrise and your sunset routines. In the morning, map out your priorities for the day. Again, I'm always pushing back to the five minute journal, something I love, something I know my wife loves. Um, she's out there every morning doing her five minute journal. Just something to focus your day on what you wanna get accomplished today. And whether it's that or it's a yellow piece of paper, I don't care. But in the morning, make sure you map out your priorities for the day. And I talked about it, was it yesterday or Monday, um, as being something important is, is set your two to three year goal, but know what you have to do today to to accomplish that goal and do those couple things and do them first thing in the morning. Do uh, the most, the highest priority things first. You'll see that when you make your journal, how many 
No, I'm not, not this journal. When you make your journal every two hours and you put down all the things, you'll see how many low priority, low return on time actions eat into your time. How much you do get distracted. Uh, but by mapping out your priorities and focusing on those things first and foremost, getting those done and out of the way so that the distractions later in the day don't distract you as much from the high priority item, items, you know, you're setting those short term goals in your head and you're earmarking them for success. Definitely uh, make sure you take advantage of that one. All right, then after you've had that morning routine done where you're doing some sort of journal or diary, focusing on your priorities, getting a couple of those things out of the way first. And obviously, again, I work a lot with chiropractors, so we've got to be at a table. We've got to go adjust all day long. If you have a project, if you're in a launch phase, if you're doing stuff where you're working on the business instead of in the business, uh, can you tell I come from the e-myth world using their te terminology there? Make sure that those projects are done first. Uh, a lot of docs that I work with are like, oh, I'll do that at lunchtime and something happens at lunch. Some distraction happens at lunch. So uh, those higher priority items working on the business should happen before you even get into the office. Now, I, I do know a lot of people, some guys adjust really, really early. That doesn't mean you can't get an hour in there sometime. Anyways, let's get to the evening. In the evening, you want to review and plan making a general plan for the next day. That's one place where I don't use the journal. Uh, there is a place in the five minute journal for a nighttime routine uh, where you're l saying, you know, kind of going through your, your, what happened today and how did it go uh, and then plan the next day. I don't, I like to just lay in bed, close my eyes and kind of envision it. Um, but you go through a, a plan in your mind of how tomorrow's gonna go and you'll flesh it out in the morning in your journal. Uh, but the other thing that you can do is make a review of what went wrong today. So as you're laying in bed or you're writing in your journal, think about how you started your morning. Here were my priorities. Here's what I wanted to get done. Start thinking about the things that went wrong, your hardest moments of the day, things that uh, didn't go as planned. You know, I got distracted by th this uh, email came in because I checked email when I shouldn't have. I ended up spending my whole day dealing with that issue and I didn't get my priorities done. Think about those things, rehearse them, understand why they happened uh, so we can fix them uh, later, which brings us to the last step towards mastering your time management. And that is to look closely at those uh, hardest moments of each day. Note those times that you work, you know, at the wrong times of the day for you or that you weren't as productive as you felt like you could have been. Or times maybe in the day where your energy was just dragging uh, or when you're doing something that you hate, uh, you know, maybe part of your task is something that you don't enjoy doing and something that you might be able to delegate. Look at those times and look at how they distracted you and threw you off. Think about every moment that exhausted you, either physically or mentally or both. Now, you can't necessarily change all these things. Again, some things you can delegate, uh, and, and you, should, you certainly should when you can, but you can acknowledge the frustration and refresh your mindset. Uh, you can adapt around those times that don't work as well for you. Looking back at those moments will help make you more self-aware. So becoming more aware of these times that frustrate you simply by recognizing how hard you worked or how, how hard you know um, those things push you off where you want to go, it's going to transform your attitude about them. You're going to realize that you do have control of them. You know, the day doesn't take control of you. You have control of the day. So if something comes through and it takes you off, it was still caused by you. So you, at the end of the day, you make those things, make those adjustments uh, and go for those. Start doing things the right way. Or, you know, you can create new triggers around those behaviors. And again, you, if you're trying to launch your practice, launch any other business, uh, launch your life, launch your fitness routine, whatever it might be, you've got to find out those routines for yourself. So hope you enjoy your coffee.